David, I, I know you, you've probably talked about this a million times and, and, I, and I've talked about, you know, your, your uh, uh, whistleblowing and, and I, I, I'd still like to, you know, repeat this to the viewers. Could you just maybe, uh, you know, tell the viewers some of the, the crimes that you saw either in person or, you know, the, the files uh, that, that you gave to ABC? What, what, what are some of the worst things that stuck in your mind? Because I feel like it's really important to illustrate this to people that are listening so they, they can understand the gravity uh, of of what happened and and also the unfairness that you know the the people that that committed murders walk free and you're the one who who is charged yeah no it was bad and as i've said uh if the war crimes were a symptom of a larger problem uh and the larger problem i mean it, it's a bit like i mean a particular things happening in syria um, and uh, it's not so much, bad as they might be, uh, false flag attacks, for example, that might kill 10 people. But the real problem is that that false flag attack was put in um, by the US High Command, which was told to do it by the, by the American presidential administration, uh, and in order to have a war and a regime change. So the higher up you get, the bigger the problems are. And that was the case in Afghanistan. As I said, we promoted uh, people um, who had clearly, uh, back in 2006, someone uh, shot a, a shepherd boy and claimed that they were a spotter um, uh, and it, for the enemy, and they got medal for it, basically, even though they'd done the wrong thing. Uh, and that set the train. We started rewarding murderers, and by 2012, things had got out of hand. They'd learnt bad lessons from the, um, uh, the British uh, SAS who said, all you have to do is shoot someone, um, doesn't matter who they are, and uh, you plant a plan either a weapon on them or something called an icon, which is a little uh, walkie-talkie, easily carried in your pocket. So you shoot a farmer dead, Put uh, put take the walkie-talkie out of your pocket, put it next to the dead body, take a photo and say, oh, this guy was on the radio. Um, and then you put the, in ultimate cynicism, you put the walkie-talkie back in your pocket and you save it for next time. Uh and in 2012, uh, it all became about kill counts and there was a competition to see who could get the latest kill count, you know, basically. Um, one time, uh, this is all stuff which came out in the Brereton report, uh, they had an engagement with some Taliban. This was a fairly typical operation. They uh, they might have killed the wrong people, they killed a few civilians, um, and they turn around and there's 12 Afghans looking at them standing by a tractor, who are clearly some sort of onion farmers, and they say, uh, shit, we've got witnesses, what are we going to do? Bang, 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 no more witnesses. Uh, they were all Taliban. <laughs> Taliban. Um, and uh, it was pretty bad, you know, and this the guy who did the inquiry was a judge, uh, and uh, he, uh, he, was, he was very fastidious, and he said that there were... 39 credible cases. But he basically said there were 39 murders, you know, because uh, he looked to do it very clearly. Um, there's still the chance that, you know, they have been investigated, but he said uh, a 19 um, soldiers involved in the murder. I mean, it, the, the main problem was not so much the numbers. It was actually that, that uh, these key corporals, um, in the SAS, a couple of them, uh, because people underneath them actually have a duty to do what they were, uh, what they're told. So it was mainly the people in leadership positions, although they were relatively low down, um, had the idea that they were just going to kill Afghans, uh, any Afghan they came across, um, because in order by doing that, they would create a climate of fear. Uh, and that the Afghans would um, consider the Australian forces uh, more scary, more ruthless than the Taliban, um, and as a result, you know, we would win the war. 
uh, because they were so scared of us. Uh, in 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 slang in Australian slang, it, it was called going up the Congo, uh, in a reference to Apocalypse Now and Colonel Kurtz and yeah, uh, the original Joseph Conrad story. Um, some of the stories in Burrington are pretty uh, are, uh, pretty terrible. People having their throats cut and cut up. I don't know whether all of it is true, um, but it certainly um, it was disturbing. Now, what I found most disturbing that all happened in two thousand and twelve. In two thousand and thirteen, uh, there was, a, as I said, they were looking for scapegoats. Everything changed. I think what happened in two thousand and twelve. The generals, the leaders of our army, found out about how bad it was. They found out they'd been people that they had personally stuck the Congressional Medal of Honor on were actually psychopathic murderers. And so they've really feared that if the press found out, not only would the would the soldier, the murderer, go down, but they would go down. Uh, for not knowing or not doing anything about it. So they were, in 2013, there was a rush for scapegoats. And this is, I think, is the most disgusting of all. Uh, the generals, um, knowing that their favoured people were murderers, uh, tried to put um, uh, non-entities in jail to keep the press happy because the rumours were swirling around and everyone was saying, is this true, is this true? Uh, and so in order to get the press off their tail, they were just going to put anybody in jail in 2013. And this is when I came in and I was like, hang on, we've got all these rumours of murders a year ago. You haven't investigated one of them. Um, and uh, now you're investigating anything. You're investigating things which could not possibly be a murder. Uh, what has changed? And, of course, then as soon as I started asking that hard question, not surprisingly, I became the problem. You know, there was someone in the organisation that suspected what was going on, and then they went for me and they tried to, you know, psychologically review me, uh, mandatory psychological, which is a way of throwing someone out, putting them in the loony bed. I think they sent yeah. me to a, a psychiatrist who gaslit me and said it's all in your imagination and, the only reason you're doing this is because you uh, you have a sense of entitlement. They got caught out. The government got caught out. Uh, um, again, it's in the public space. They got caught out at the same time um, of finding other other government uh, whistleblowers like myself potential. They would send them to a psychiatrist, a particular psychiatrist paid for by the military or by the government agency. And that psychiatrist that was speaking to the potential whistleblower would gaslight the whistleblower and say, you don't have a leg to stand on. You're, it's all in your imagination. It didn't really happen. Um, and, uh, at, you know, at the, it, this was a government plan to 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 mess whistleblowers up. Now, that's yeah. absolutely disgusting. Now, that, they disgusting. got caught out and they had to pay compensation. Um, and it's in the public domain, but you'd think people would, you know, when you put that, it, it, there'd be no way I'd be facing trial because they did that to me. And it took me a while um, to think about it. I didn't even get it because you're seeing a psychiatrist and he's a civilian and he's very smooth and uh, you don't immediately cotton on because uh, uh, you've got trust in these people. But afterwards, I think, hang on, what? he's not a lawyer. Why is he telling me I don't have a legal case to stand on? And yeah. um, it was uh, it was strange, and so yeah, they then they uh, um, when I made an internal complaint, they said there was nothing in it, uh, and um, and so on and so on. So it actually proves the bigger um, the bigger things that your listeners and viewers will know about that it wasn't um, wasn't so much the war crimes. Uh, but it was um, the fact that they they were prepared to cover them up. That the war crimes were done with encouragement and and and, and com, uh, complicit uh, relations between the uh, the leadership uh, and the soldiers. And then when it came to light, uh, the leadership tried to cover up those war crimes. And then when someone like myself cottoned on to the cover up. They tried to destroy me, so it's all quite big picture stuff. It's a bit like yeah. the um, 
the whistleblowers who uh, suggested uh, the false flag gas attack um, in Duma, I think it was, or the various ones, um, and they were legitimate uh, experts on the area from the yeah. United Nations, how they were destroyed um, by, uh, you know, the US and their proxies. Uh, so it's a big, it's a much bigger issue um, than just um, the shooting dead of a few villages. Uh, and, of course, that's why um, I believe it's really important uh, to fight. I don't particularly want um, soldiers going to jail. That won't solve the problem. This is why I keep having it. If it was just about a couple of war crimes, we could put those corporals in jail uh, and that would be the end of the problem. But unfortunately, it's not the case. It's a much bigger problem than that. Like putting a few corporals in jail will not solve it. Um, it's not so much about the last war, it's about the next war. Uh, 